Welcome everyone. Uh, we're here to share with you information about scholarships and how scholarships are for everyone. Yes, we have scholarships for all types of higher education. My name is Amber Burns and I'm from the Duluth Superior Area Community Foundation. And I'm Patty Salo Downs and I'm with the Marshall H. and Nellie Allworth Scholarship Foundation. And between the two organizations, we offer 2 million in scholarships every year to students in our region. All right, well, let's talk about the cost of college. Um, so looking at some of our local colleges, a four-year degree at UMD is almost $25,000 for one year. And of course, we multiply that by four years. So that's almost $100,000 for a four-year degree. And then our two-year degrees, so like a technical or trade school, well, those can be six to $13,000 a year times two, we're almost looking at 26 to $30,000 for school. Mm -hmm. So um, it's a lot of money, but don't let those price tags scare you off too much because one of the strategies that helps student, students graduate with little to no debt is scholarships and scholarships are for everyone. And what is a scholarship? It's free money. You don't have to pay it back. And Amber, what about those loans? Why should we avoid taking out loans? Yeah, you know, a lot of students we hear say, well, I'm not going to apply for scholarships because, you know, I'm just going to take student loans out. Everybody does it. But listen, you know, $100,000 to go to UMD, that's a lot of money to take out. And let's say you end up taking out $60,000 to pay for your degree. Um, by the time you pay that back, you have to add interest. So you're paying back like $80,000 instead of the 60 that you took out. And that's a lot of money. I mean, when you think about it um, and how long that's going to take to pay back, that's like a 20 to 30 year commitment of paying back that money that you had to borrow. But again, scholarships are free money. You do not have to pay scholarships back. So let's do the math, okay? Your senior year of high school is very, very busy, but we are encouraging you to carve out some special time to uh, research scholarships and apply for them. So the All Worth Scholarship this year is $24,000. You get $6,000 a year. Uh, to help you pay for school. We fund bachelor's degrees, so it's a four-year type um, program for us. And maybe it takes you four hours to fill out that application. And then you get, congratulations, you've been awarded the Allworth letter. How much money did you make per hour? It's $6,000 per hour. That is a big chunk of change. That's way more than Amber and I and 500 other people combined probably, you know, for uh, making money per hour. But when you look at um, working full time, which is 2040 hours a year at $15 an hour, your, your pay is $30,600, but that's before taxes. They take the taxes off. So what you get is considerably less. And so spending your time on scholarships is well worth it for the time invested for the return. There was a student from ESCO several years ago. She researched, found 15 different scholarships to apply for. She was awarded eight. One of them was the Allworth and she had $80,000 in her hip pocket to help her pay for school. She earned $80,000 her senior year to help her pay for college. And that's why we want to spend this time with you because we want students out there in our region to understand the lucrative opportunity and to get into action and apply for this money. Sometimes students may not know exactly what they want to major in college. And um, I'm, I'm just gonna say college we're using as sort of a blanket term for all vocational school, uh, certifications, Associate of Arts degrees, those kinds of things. But um, we're going to use the word college and it encompasses all those opportunities. But Maddie, a student we awarded several years ago, 
Um, all she knew is that she liked math and that she wanted to work in the medical field, but she didn't want to work directly with patients. So here's her story. She received her master's in applied statistics, graduated debt free because she had scholarships and she did some summer work. Now she works as a biostatistician in the quantitative health science de department at Mayo and loves her job. Her advice is shoot your shot because you never know you could get this and be confident in your capabilities. So think of Maddie, you know, if you're feeling a little uncertain, gee, I don't really know, but put something down as a major that you are passionate about, go off to college and see how it manifests. So we want you to apply for scholarships, not only because we are hoping that you won't go into debt, that's my number one goal for you, um, but we also want you to have fun in college and explore the opportunities that school has. So when somebody else is paying for your education, you don't have to get three or four different jobs and then you're working and doing your homework and going to school and maybe sleeping. Um, when somebody else is paying for that education, you have more freedom to do the things that you want to do, such as um, maybe you want to study abroad, do undergraduate research, get involved with clubs or sports or other things. Patty, you have an awesome student who got to participate yes. in a club and is doing something that is really extreme. Oh, it's extreme, all right. Okay, <laughs> one of our students from Ely High School, his name is Shane Spangler. He applied for the scholarship, received it, went to the University of Minnesota Twin Cities, and his first semester of college as a freshman, he joined the Solar Car Club. And all four years, he participated in the Solar Car Club. And that means basically designing, building a solar car from scratch. This year, his team at the University of Minnesota placed first in nationals, which got them a spot to race in the world championship race, solar car competition in Australia. Wow. Currently, this is October. He is racing the car that he and his teammates built in Australia at this very moment. And currently their car is in first place. So without scholarships, without additional aid, Shane would have never had time to participate at that high level in this great club that is affording him this remarkable once in a lifetime experience. It's amazing. So when you're looking at grad school or landing your dream job, having someone else pay for your college education is will pay back big dividends. And even undergraduate research, most often those positions aren't paid. You get paid in experience doing research for a professor at your academic institution. If you have to work, you may not have time to participate at that level. And, um, and I would say, and Amber, we both believe graduate with as little to no debt as possible. And so scholarships, this is the time your senior year to start applying. And we have some tips along the way for how to make your application stand out. And we'll share those in a little bit. But where do we find out about scholarships, Amber? Yeah, so a lot of our counselors or our school guidance office at our high school, that's probably your number one resource. Um, they put together amazing pages and websites for you so you can find out all about the scholarships um, at different foundations, even scholarships specifically for your high school that people have put together. So check out what your counselor has put together. Um, other schools that you're thinking about going to, like UMD and UWS, they have all have scholarships of their own that you can apply for. Um, employers, maybe your parents or friends work at a, at a company that has scholarships just for that company or their company's children. 
Um, and then check out churches and unions, um, Lions Club, Rotary Club, all sorts of places have scholarships and they happen year round. So we encourage you to keep looking, keep asking, because not only do we have a ton of scholarships for you, but there are so many out there. And again, go back to that example, that girl from ESCO, she kept applying and applying and ended up with $80,000 with all those scholarships built up. Okay, so here's a little bit about the Allworth Scholarship. You can go to our website and find the application. But this is an academic scholarship. Okay, Mr. Allworth set this scholarship up in 1949. His passions were math, science, and medical fields of study. So that's why we are focused on funding uh, bachelor's degrees in those fields of study. Um, the academic side means that he wanted to fund students of high academic ability. And so that's why we require the ACT uh, minimum score of 24. We also require a GPA minimum of 3.5. There's also a financial need component and it's the adjusted gross income must be less than $175,000. Last year, we had about 100 people apply. 80 people were selected for our scholarship. So when, when you're looking at scholarship opportunities. It's the regional and the local scholarships where you have the best chances of getting selected for this free money, so to speak. And, um, and so we want you to uh, put a lot of effort into it this year, your senior year, carve out some time. It's almost like a little extracurricular activity. Apply for scholarships, put that alongside of your study time, maybe going out with friends maybe being in a, on a sports team or in theater or something like that, put some dedicated hours on your calendar so that you can focus on these wonderful opportunities, lucrative opportunities. All right. And like Patty said, these local scholarships are amazing. You have a huge opportunity. She's 80 out of 100 students, got $20,000 each last year. That's amazing. Same with our scholarships. We have over 80 different scholarships. Some are big and some are small, um, $1,000 up to $20,000 plus. And again, you have a huge opportunity to get these scholarships because some of our scholarships, we don't have anyone apply for. We had one scholarship where we had $20,000 to give and we wanted to give four students $5,000 each. Only one student applied for this scholarship. So our scholarship committee was like, well, let's give all 20,000 to this one student. So we encourage you to apply for these because that's all you have to do is apply. Mm -hmm. And since we have so many different scholarships, they're all different criteria. Some of them, um, you wanna go into art. Some of them, you have to go to UMD. Some of them are math and science. And some of them are wide open and it doesn't matter what field of study you wanna go into. But to make it easy, one of the ways that you can search our scholarships is you can go to our website, www.dsacommunityfoundation.org, and go to our scholarships, and you can search by your high school attending. So just by typing in the high school that you go to, it'll sort out all of the scholarships that you qualify for. You can also use the search bar to type in like math or STEM or engineering if that those are the types of scholarships you want to look for as well. Now, the apply for scholarship button takes you to the same page. So Patty, go ahead and click the next slide. You're going to come to this page, which is our scholarship portal. So everyone needs to create an account. The student applying should be the one creating the account. You're going to use your email address, a personal email address, not your high school email address, because your high school email address goes away after you graduate high school. And we need this portal to um, live with you for all of your years in college, master's degrees, doctorates. We have scholarships for you, so you have to be able to access your portal. Then if you go to the next slide, once you're in your portal, you will see an apply button up at the top. And this is our page that will show all of the scholarships available at that time. So our giant scholarship application is called the Universal Application, and this opens December 1st. So you can create your scholarship profile right now. However, the if it's um, 
not December 1st, 2023 yet. You won't see the Universal. However, if it's after December 1st, 2023, you should see the Universal application pop up. Then once you um, see that pop up, you're going to fill out the first page of the Universal application. And that's like an eligibility quiz. And what happens is you fill it out, you put in everything, all your fields of interest. It can be math, art, all of them, all the schools you are interested in. And then after that, it's going to automatically filter out all the scholarships you qualify for. So we will do the work for you in terms of what do you qualify for? You just fill out that first page of the application and then it will automatically sort it out. And you might see on this page other scholarships pop out pop up throughout the year because we have all sorts of little specialty scholarships. For example, this page is showing the Duluth Builders Scholarship, which we have um, an apprentice scholarship for students in trades programs that are already in an apprentice program, which is paid for by the union. However, your tools are not paid for. So we have a scholarship that will pay for your work boots, your welding gear, all sorts of things for that apprenticeship. So um, be checking this portal out all year round because we have all types of scholarships. Okay. Yes. And a variety of scholarships where you don't have to have the 3.5 or the ACT score. You can, uh, every, every kind of major, I think you have art scholarships. If students want to major in art, there are scholarships available for that. Um, technical school is a, tr is a wonderful opportunity for students in our region. We have a shortage of skilled trades people currently happening. And so you can get six figure incomes from the trades. And so there are ways in which you can check out those opportunities. The one um, website you may want to focus on is the 218trades.com. It'll give you some information that might be valuable and maybe helping you determine where it is you wanna put your energy and your future career. It's affordable tuition too, and it doesn't take four years, two years maybe or maybe a year and a half kind of certification program. Um, there's a variety of opportunities there. So what's in an application? I, I look at this and I get overwhelmed. <laughs> you probably are too, but not every scholarship is gonna require all of this information. So, so just keep that in mind. And scholarships are not just for the top of the class students. Scholarships are for a variety of, of majors and vocations. And so I just want you to know and believe that there's a scholarship for everyone who's tuned into this presentation. It is imperative though that you find those scholarships and then apply for them. And the best way to find them is through the counselor's office. But the point is, um, these are some of the things you may need. Um, we require the ACT, just a little bit of ACT information here. Uh, it's October now. And so the next testing dates are December and also February. Our application deadline is January 15th, but don't let that wig you out, okay? Because what we will do is you submit your application by the deadline and your test scores can catch up with your application. So we highly encourage you to, to take the test and also the test scores can garner you more money at the academic institution where you are. And it also helps with placement. If you're in regular uh, math courses or if you're in honors uh, math courses, it does, there is an advantage at other levels if you do have your test scores. The Duluth Superior Area Community Foundation, they do not require them, but um, we do. And so you'll find that throughout your um, scholarship navigation research the different criteria that people will be requesting of you depends on the scholarship. All right, so we really um, encourage you to think about the essay section of your applications because this is really the vote getter. This is where the scholarship committees get to um, learn who you are because you are telling us your story. So this is, such an important part of the application. Um, and I really, I don't even like to use the word essay necessarily because it really is more about tell us your story, tell us about who you are, 
um, one of our questions is, how do you spend your time outside of school? And and we want to know every little thing, you know, maybe you participate in sports, maybe you participate in clubs and activities, or maybe you have to go home and take care of your siblings every day because your parents work. Or maybe you go to work every day at Super One or, or something like that, uh, or you help your, you walk your neighbor's dogs or you shovel their driveway, all those little things add up to who you are as a person and help tell our scholarship committees about you and your character. Um, and we always say, think beyond, I'm a hard worker, because, you know, everybody can say, I'm a hard worker, right? But we want to know why or how are you a hard worker? What evidence can you show us that that says, this is why I'm a hard worker and this is what I do. Um, and then um, some applications, including the Duluth Prairie Area Community Foundation require video components. And uh, what we um, wanna see is again, who you are and learn a little bit about you. And some of us are really great at writing about ourselves and some of us are better at telling the story. Um, so we just want that little video of you um, sharing your passions, or we might ask you to share a challenge and how did you learn from that challenging experience? Um, and there's all sorts of different um, questions throughout different applications. Thank you. Um, so some of the questions you might see, why do you want to go to college? What inspires you to study a certain field? What experience have been important to you and changed your life? That's a very common question. And interestingly enough, Amber always likes to say, the big secret is that most essay questions are similar. So if you get a couple of good responses written up, you can cut and paste and revise them depending upon what the scholarship um, is asking you for in the way of additional information and essays. So it's important that you take time and work on these uh, answers because this is the vote getter section uh, and we want to learn more about you. One of the questions that we have is about the challenge and what did you learn? Uh, your challenge, you don't have to be successful at the challenge. You could have a flaming failure, as I like to call them. And, and, and as long as you include what did you learn, you know, that's where the golden uh, words are. That's where your experience has been. And that's what we want to know about. Uh, also, please answer every question. Students who skip answering a question, uh, unfortunately, they get kind of put off to the side and there's no further consideration of their application. So don't make that mistake. And we also want you to paint your full picture like Amber talked about earlier and start writing them now. You cannot craft good responses the night before the deadlines. So it is important you can pull up our questions on our website. Amber has a, a question, how do you spend your time? That's your uh, basic question for um, the essays, essay portion of her applications, and um, give it some zest and passion. Um, if you're bored writing your essay, the readers will be bored reading it. So maybe you're not a zesty writer, so then get some help. Talk to other people, show them your essay and say, how can you, how can we jeep this up so that it reads more interesting and so on? And um, certainly get it spell checked and get all those little grammar things taken care of too. And if that's not your strong suit, then rely on other people to help you edit your piece. There's also something very important to remember. Um, so we can say, I'm a hard worker, but be sure the I is capitalized and not the little I. I had an essay come through, every I was little I, lowercase I. And guess what? That didn't help that person in getting selected. So this is a very, very important, uh, you know, review, have other people see it and be sure that when it's submitted, it's as, about as perfect as possible. And you can ask for help in getting that happen. So don't procrastinate, start working on those questions now. And we're looking for the real you, okay? You don't have to uh, pretend to put uh, information down that you think, you know, oh, this would, this would get a vote. No, 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 you will get a vote. We're looking for you. So 
at any rate. Uh, and it can be kind of fun. Make it fun for writing up your talking about you and how, how high school has helped you and what your challenges have been and so on and so forth. Set a goal. I think, you know, maybe we look at finding the money for school as sort of a game show. You know, if your college is going to cost $100,000, put that down and then reach out and research your scholarships. Uh, Amber, you had a student who was very, very stra strategic in how she did this. Yeah, we had a student who um, put together a spreadsheet and she would put the title of the scholarship, the deadline, because the deadlines are all different. So keep track of the deadlines. And then she would put the essay question for that scholarship. And then every time she found a new scholarship and she added it to the spreadsheet, she could look back and say, I already answered that essay question. Oh, great. I'll just use that or copy and paste or edit it. And um, that was a great way to keep track of not only the essays, but the deadlines for scholarships as well. Mm -hmm. So you can create a plan, work the plan and set a goal. Our deadlines are January 15th for the Allworth and the Duluth Superior Area Community Foundation is February 15th. Our application opens on November 1. So you have from November 1 to January 15th. And then uh, the Community Foundation, it opens on December 1st through February 15th. So you can start getting in the groove of applying for scholarships right this very moment and to keep applying throughout the year. One of the big drawbacks uh, in, in thinking that students, um, they fail to apply for scholarships. And I've heard this from parents and I've heard it directly from students. Well, I'm not gonna apply because I'm not gonna get it. Okay, so we're here to tell you, we have committees, we have board members who review the applications and they determine whether or not you get it. How do you know you won't get it? Maddie said, shoot your shot. You never, you, you're never gonna know if you're gonna get it unless you shoot your shot. So I don't have time. They're overwhelmed by the process. I'll just take out loans, major default, not at all uh, a place you should be thinking at this point in time, because you can always take out loans if you do not get enough scholarship money. That's the secondary approach. I'm not a good writer, get help, afraid to ask for a letter of recommendation, ask for it, ask for it now. And be sure if you're applying for the Allworth, you ask a math or science teacher because it's a math science scholarship. So we have a specific type of teacher that we want a letter of recommendation. It takes too much time to fill out an application. Well, maybe the first one will be a little time consuming, but once you get in the groove, you certainly will find it goes quicker and faster. You get those couple of good essays written together. And um, if you're taking a gap year before starting college, apply as a senior. You can always defer your scholarship a year so you can take the gap year and then you can start getting the scholarship money after you do your adventure or whatever else you're thinking of doing in that year. And remember the math for every scholarship. Remember the math, even if it's a $50 scholarship, even if it's a hundred or $1,500 scholarship, all those little amounts add up and it will help you pay for college and it will minimize the loan debt that you may need to carry down the line. So this is probably the most important job you have your senior year is to apply for scholarships. Think of making $80,000 in one year. It's doable. So we encourage you to do all this work. And if you have any questions, here's our email, here's our phone number. Amber and I, we root for you. We want to support you in this process. And so please reach out. Uh, we'll be there for you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.